Well, good morning, Hanover Saints. We welcome you today and we extend a special welcome to any visitors who are here with us on this special celebration day. My name is Eloise Downing and I'm a member of Hanover Church and I'm very glad to be with you celebrating this worship time together. Today, we highlight our special partnership with the Jefferson Street Center. This is part of all the celebrations that we are having for our 250th anniversary of Hanover Church. So we'll be hearing more about Jefferson Street Center during the message time today. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the light for our pathways, and you speak the ultimate word of love, justice, and peace. We gather today to praise you for your presence in our midst. Strengthen us to be messengers of your love and your hope, now and forever. Amen. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. May these words of scripture today inspire us to be both bearers and doers of the word in our communities and our world. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, and 13 through to 16. Those who are interested in following along, it's on page 837 in your pew Bible. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and thought them, saying, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its tasteness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
A reading from James. My brothers and sisters, every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the God of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of God's own purpose, we were born by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of God's creatures. And so, my beloved, be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we celebrate the doing of God's word in our midst with messages from our JSC, our Jefferson Street Center leaders, about JSC in our midst, in the past, in the present, and the future. Good morning, everyone. And I also want to welcome those who might watch or listen to this recording later on. Um, I'm glad everyone is here. Um, in case uh, there's someone there who doesn't know, I'm Ellen Casson. I'm a member of Hanover and also serving on the board of JSC and currently the treasurer. And I'm going to introduce Amanda August, who's our executive director, and then Romaine Alexander, who is vice president of the board, is going to kind of close us out. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce Amanda. Um, she was hired as executive director just in April of 2021, and she's an employee of one, so please pray for her. <laughs> she has a lot on her plate. Um, her most recent previous employment was with West End Neighborhood House as an independent living coordinator. She specialized in working with youth aging out of foster care, a pretty complex and difficult job. Uh, she has a Master of Arts degree in social justice and community organizing. But I think the best way I can help you get an idea of who Amanda is, is to just use Hanover's 
statement of faith and purpose. It's probably going to seem a little odd to Amanda, but the three words that we use to describe Hanover, hospitality, diversity, and justice, those words are in that statement. And I just, it's not long, I'm going to read it, because I do think um, it's a statement that all of us at Hanover, at any rate, need to keep in our hearts as we're moving forward through uh, kind of uncharted waters ahead of us. We seek to see the light in every child of God, believing that diversity is of God's desire and design. We strive to embrace the gift of life by offering unconditional hospitality. We serve to express the love of God by working for justice for all of God's children. And I just want to say in the short time I've known Amanda, she expresses hospitality, embraces diversity, and expresses a commitment to social justice in pretty much everything she does. We're really fortunate to have her as our executive director. But before you get to hear from her, I'm going to tell you a little history because I think there are a lot of people here who don't know that JSC goes back to 1987. I wasn't even a member of Hanover at that time, and I bet a lot of you were not either. Um, and one of the key things about Jefferson Street Center then and now is all about community. So in the 80s, Hanover members joined with people in the community, went around the neighborhoods, and asked residents, what do you need most? And they said, we want a good quality child care center, affordable, and in our community. And in 1987, First Step Children's Center was formed and filled both floors of the uh, education wing. Um, and Lori, who's singing in the choir, um, was a founding member. She was part of that group in the late 80s and uh, a founding member of the 501c3 nonprofit in 1987. Um, she's currently on the board still and has been serving for secretary longer than we can imagine. So she's not secretary right now but she has been there all those years to support Jefferson Street Center. I also want you to know that there have been other Hanover members, people who are currently Hanover members who served on the board over the years. Um, Tim Arnold is one of them, um, Karen Wilson, Marjorie Pulliam, Chris Lindsay, some of you may not know Chris Lindsay, but Chris and Laura Lindsay are still members of Hanover, even though they don't live nearby anymore. And last but not least, Ruth Howell, who's in church with us today, which is so wonderful. <laughs> um, we, we had a very successful child care center, but in 2010, the board made the um, difficult decision to close the center. That was on the heels of the economic downturn in 2008, and um, a lot of the families who had their children in First Step were working parents, but also below the poverty line. When jobs started to tank, the, their jobs went first. So when they lost their jobs, they took their children out of the child care center, and we just couldn't raise enough money to keep it going. Um, so in 2010, we got ourselves together, former board members and uh, the current board members at that time, and Becky's sister, Linda Zankowski, kind of led us through a um, rethinking of what we could be. So we decided to hang on to the 501c3. At that time, it was called Jefferson Street Center. Child Center Incorporated, and we changed the name to Jefferson Street Center Incorporated. And we became a facilitator, a community connector. Um, we entered into a more formal partnership with Hanover, 
and signed an MOU, and part of that focus of that memorandum of understanding was that JSC would start to take more responsibility for the community programs that were using Hanover Building, the gathering place area, food pantry, clothing closet activities in the gym, and organizations that were using the place for meeting space. And that kind of led to us forming a readiness team. The readiness teams were statewide, and their focus was on helping communities work with families and children to make them as ready as possible for preschool and first grade. And that group then, with JSC's help, um, put in an application to become a blueprint community. And you might wonder what a blueprint community is. Um, the concept was developed in 2005 and implemented by the Federal Home Loan Bank of Pittsburgh. Um, blueprint communities create momentum for revitalizing older neighborhoods. The focus is on neighborhood stewardship, building strong local leadership, collaboration, and development capacity. And the Federal Home Loan Bank encouraged investment in targeted communities that were chosen as blueprint communities. So in 2016, JSC and the readiness team formed a blueprint team. And in 2017, we had a community revitalization plan put together and we presented it at the Chase Center at the riverfront. It was a big deal. And the other big deal about the plan is that Hanover Presbyterian Church and Jefferson Street Center are anchor organizations in that plan. So in 2018, this vision of the Blueprint team, JSC, and Hanover coming together in a more formal way really got off the ground. We enlarged the board. Uh, some of the Blueprint team members became members of the board, and the focus was on implementing the Blueprint Revitalization Plan and the growth of a community hub and raising funds for the operation of that community hub and to sustain the community hub. Our former pastor, Andy Jacob, was huge in making that happen. And you may not be aware of the fact that he served as president of the board for three years. And he made a huge difference. His leadership really got us to a new level. So in 2019, 20, 21, we started writing grants and got money from foundations. And I can tell you, our requests resonated with the foundations. And the reason is, it was all about community, collaboration, being partners. And we raised over $547,000, folks. That was in um, capital fundraising to do renovations here at Hanover and also operational money. And you might remember Hanover people raised $175,000, a little over $175,000, just for the air conditioning, which we are grateful for today. <laughs> there's, a, there's a written report, by the way, on the back tables that talks more specifically about the fundraising and the capital stuff that was done around this space, in case you're interested, you can take it home with you. It has pictures too. Or if you want me to email you a version, you can let me know. So this is quite a bit of history, but I really think it's important for Hanover folks to know that Jefferson Street Center has been around a long time and been partnering with Hanover for a long time. But right now, it's doing a new thing. Just like Hanover's theme for the 250th, 
doing a new thing. And that's going to be exciting, I think, for the future of JSC and for the future of Hanover. And speaking of the future, I'm going to turn it over to Amanda. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Good morning. Thank you so much for welcoming me, welcoming me to your service and to have a little bit of time and opportunity to talk about myself and JSC. Um, especially our impactful and important partnership with Hanover, with you all. The organization's mission, just to start from the beginning, is to promote social justice for all with a special emphasis on improving the quality of life for individuals and families living in the surrounding community. Since the blueprint process that Ellen had touched on, we've grown from, a func from functioning as an all-volunteer organization with a skilled working board, which some of you have served on, um, that has also has several Hanover members, to hiring its first executive director, and most recently, and what's been really exciting for me, is this past week, we, ha we have our first AmeriCorps uh, volunteer, a public ally. Um, so if you see anybody around the building, and his name is Savon, he is with us, and please say hi and welcome him. So since April 2021, uh, when I was hired, we've been really busy. We've connected with neighbors, small businesses, and schools in our service community. We serve as organizational partners for Open Streets, which had an amazing event last October out on Banner Boulevard. I think I saw a lot of you there where we closed down the street from 18th to Concord Avenue. And we are excited again to partner this coming October 15th with a special focus on transit safety on the corridor. We're collaborating with other youth organizations to figure out ways to safely transport kids to these different programs in order to help to grow their minds and their hearts. We've been working to support the village market located at Market and Race to grow it into something that is community driven and provides a fruitful place to gather every Tuesday evening during the summer nights. We're working on so many projects and I just wanted to touch on a few. But the one project that has been the most impactful, I think for the organization and for myself, is building a community, a growing community hub with Hanover. So going back to April 2021, when I like to joke that I was voted onto the Je Jefferson Street Center Island, um, we, we really jumped right in and got to work. Uh, the Hanover staff and volunteers, you know, welcomed me with open arms and open hearts, and our collaboration has just taken off beyond my wildest dreams. Uh, we have worked together to respond to the impact of COVID. We brought a mobile vaccination program to 18th Street way back when, if we can remember that <laughs> far ago. <laughs> And we also performed a community assessment to see exactly what our neighbors needed during periods of lockdown and resource shortages. Since the beginning of this iteration of JSC, I should say, because we know it has a long history, we've also continued to work closely with program managers in a collaborative response to COVID, building plans for sustainability and connecting new partnerships and opportunities. So one of the biggest developments, however, I think, is the deep collaboration in building an accessible and equitable community hub here at Hanover. Over the past year, a group that has members of both JSC and of Hanover, called the Partnership Advisory Group, or sometimes you'll hear PAG uh, instead, it rolls off the tongue a little easier, has been meeting to discuss, build, and grow policies and procedures for the hub. By having these intentional discussions, we work furiously to preserve Hanover as a sacred space while also creating structured systems for the community to deliver highly impactful programming. This past spring, we tested our policies and we ran a six month pilot program. And, oh, excuse me, and to figure out what works, what doesn't, and what we hadn't discovered or talked about yet. We collected important data from over 100 plus people, some of you may remember those surveys that were happening about a month ago, 
From over 100 plus people that represent program participants, customers, volunteers, building staff, community partners, and tenants. And this data will help us figure out how we can plan together with Hanover to address some of the feedback and ideas brought forward by all of these folks and you all. In addition, during this pilot, we have also utilized grant funding to work with the CPA in partnership with Hanover to build sustainable financial systems for both organizations and entities. So during this pilot program, we worked hard to bring community partners in, partners such as The Stand, which is a local youth workforce development program that starts in a classroom and transitions to working out in a food truck out in the community. Uh, we have worked with Bright Spot Farms, who taught a cooking class to youth right downstairs, and is also providing free locally grown produce to the food pantry during a 16-week program. We've partnered with many others, such as Public Allies, Urban Bike Project, and more. And we're gonna see how we can best use the amenities that this beautiful building has to offer the community. So this brings us to the present. And I don't know if you all know, but we're having a small party next Saturday. Um, this grand opening block party and open house is truly to celebrate the collaboration between Hanover and JSC and to honor the respect and trust of our symbiotic relationship. In true fashion, we've been planning together for the last five months for this great event, which is free for the community and to, sh uh, to share why the community hub is so important and how we plan to serve. Additionally, and another reason to celebrate, we've received recent news that we are the recipient of a large grant from the city of Wilmington through the American Rescue Plan Act, also known as ARPA. These funds will directly support renovations to hub space in the building, like installing a new sound system in the stage area for community events, open mic nights, and things to support programming throughout the winter, and building a computer lab in the Ed Wing for after school or ESL programs. We, I, I just really could not be more excited about all the work that we're doing together. So in closing, as a final thought, I just would really like to say a heartfelt thank you Thank you to everyone I've met here at Hanover um, and who I've yet to meet and who has made me feel welcome like I have been part of your community for years. I can truly say that those that I have had the pleasure of working closely with are now dear friends and I imagine that pool will continue to grow. Your dedication to hospitality, justice, and diversity truly emanates out into the world and I and GAC feel lucky to be part of such an inclusive and loving community. Thank you. Well, good morning, Hanover Saints. My time before you this morning would be brief. Um, Sharice told me to keep it short and sweet. And I hate to say it, she's usually right. Uh, my charge this morning is to tell you why I joined the Jefferson Street um, Center Board. And you know, going last, there's always this danger that people before you will say what you were going to say. And so that's no different today. But as I, as I pondered this question last night, um, as it was mentioned earlier, three words kept coming to my mind. And as it was mentioned, I think we all know what those three words are. Hospitality, diversity, and justice. I was excited to join the JSC board because they embraced the three cornerstones of this church. Hospitality, diversity, and justice. Let's start with the word hospitality. JSC's vision for the gathering place is for people from all social economic backgrounds to be able to come together for a meal or a meeting and find common ground when they can converse with each other, talk about things that they normally wouldn't talk about, and maybe as a result, people think and maybe we all realize that we are all pretty much the same, that we're not really different. And the gathering place not only allows people to come together, but it gives them a sense of dignity. 
Isn't that what we're all about here at Hanover? Now let's look at the word diversity. The JSC board membership is made up of a diverse group of people who are reflective of the larger community. That diversity can be seen in, on so many different levels, racially, socially, economically, educationally, vocationally, different genders, and sexual orientation. I want to ask you to do me a quick favor. Uh, take a look around this sanctuary real quick. As you can see, that diversity is reflective here at Hanover. On any given Sunday, you can see that diversity. I'm happy to say in 2022, as a congregation, we look a lot different than we did in 1772. Can I get an amen? <laughs> now let's look at the final word, justice. The purpose of the Jefferson Street Center is to promote social justice for all with a special emphasis on improving the quality of life for the individuals and families living in this surrounding community. Now I know I don't have to tell you Hanover Presbyterian Church has been at the forefront of just about every social justice reform movement in this state. It's in our DNA. As you can see, JSC's mission is very much in line with what we believe in here at Hanover. So why wouldn't I want to join? Another reason why I'm glad to be a part of the JSC board is because as a member elder of Hanover, I understand the partnerships are nothing new at 18th and Baynard Boulevard, and that they have played a significant role in our 250 years of history. Now we all know that there's no bigger partnership than our partnership relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But God knew we would need others to help us carry out his mission here on earth. The Bible has many examples of partnerships and the value they brought to particular situations and circumstances. In this transitional period, we have a unique opportunity to look at this partnership with JSC and think outside the box. How can we as a congregation continue to meet the needs of our community? What new ways can we partnership with JSC to maximize our efforts with the limited resource, resources we have available, financially and human capital? I am reminded of this old saying, a team of horses can pull more weight jointly than they can individually. Jointly through our partnership with JSC, we'll be able to do more than we can on our own. The history of Hanover Church has been an ever-changing stream of people doing what they see as God's work. I believe through this partnership, relationship with JSC, we will be able to develop new creative ways to continue to let our hospitality, diversity, and justice shine for another 250 years. All praises be to God for partnerships and the wonderful things that can be achieved when we work together. May God continue to bless this partnership with JSC. May we bring glory and honor to God by all the wonderful things accomplished through this partnership. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Indeed, the whole world is in God's hands. And today, we are called to share in that mission to hold our little corner of the world in our hands, offering peace, justice, joy, hospitality, and confidence in God's word in our lives. So let us go forth today in the name of God who is creator, Jesus, who is Redeemer, and the Spirit of Life, who bids us to go forth now and forever. Amen.